mathematics can be a language of relationships with our, our relation to all these things that exist in the world around us. If a child isn't doing well with reading, we all tend to notice that. Parents, teachers, everybody tends to notice that and wishes the child to do better. If a child isn't doing so well with math, some of us tend to write it off and say, oh, she's just not very good at math. Or, oh, I wasn't very good at math either, so my child, he's not going to be very good at math either. And we seem to almost accept that that's okay. It's easy to fall behind in math, and it's very hard to catch up in math. It's easy to rationalize a way that you're struggling in math and that it matters. Uh, it does matter, it, and it can hold children back later on. One, two, three, four, numbers knocking on the door. Five, six, seven, eight, numbers, numbers just can't... So it's important to get children engaged in math, to get teachers engaged in helping children find their way through math. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. All right, Aaliyah, you bring it over. And our number is stretching out so big. Can you compose our number? And we'll leave it right under. So we have 4,500. 57. Numbers, they will work for you. Let's do the numbers counting right. As we leave circle, the children are invited to choose anything in the classroom. They have freedom to choose anything they want, which includes math. And the math is always on display every day. And it's the same basic materials every day with math. And so they will gravitate towards that or not. And if we find that a child is not gravitating towards it in the way that we would like them to, we will encourage them. One and one is two, two and two is four for you, three. Montessori materials have blocks that can be manipulated um, by grouping them. The children are using algebra. And it's so important for the children as is happening in our uh, situation. The children are not only learning how to regroup, uh, how to re-combine, um, but they're learning that these are algebraic skills. We don't restrict math to a certain time of day. You know, we don't do math from 9 to 10. Uh, our work cycle is a uh, ideally a three-hour time block where the children have free choice about the materials that they're using. So children may be doing math um, right next to someone doing language. Um, so there is constantly math happening in the classroom. And um, even if a child is not doing an actual math lesson right at the time, there's a lot of proximal learning going on. So, um, you know, one of the younger children might be sitting next to one of the older children doing addition. Um, and even though this child is, is not themselves doing addition, they are, they are watching what the elder children are doing and they actually start to learn from each other. Children start to, to pick up the teens sequence, counting teens, um, because they're, they're just around it. One of my favorite examples is uh, at the beginning of the year, we, uh, we were in, in the classroom and somebody was counting, and all of a sudden, around the classroom, all the children just started chiming in as somebody was doing a matching work over here. They were, they were counting right along with the person who was actually using the materials and counting. They learn from one another more than they learn from me sitting down with them and teaching them this is how you do this. Now they get the, the initial foundation from me presenting the lesson to them, but 
It's more about what they learn from one another because they can relate to one another on their own level. And so that makes it much more of a comfortable environment for them where there's no pressure. By, by not having a specific time set aside, okay, everybody's gonna do math right now, we're all gonna do the same kind of math right now. Um, there's a variety of, of things going on. One minus one is zero. Two minus one is one. We did a lot of projects. For instance, we took one, um, one trip and we went and got these pumpkins and we brought the pumpkins back um, and we measured the pumpkins, the circumference of the pumpkins, we weighed the pumpkins, we took the tops off of the pumpkins and counted all of the seeds um, and grouped them and then we compared how many different seeds each pumpkin had and made graphs. So I would say just like these giant projects that help them make connections about how math is truly everything. Let's see what else numbers do go for. Minus two is two, five. Preschool teachers don't need expertise in math itself so much as they need to develop their skills to focus a child's attention on mathematical elements of the world in the classroom and in the school environment and to draw out children's thinking, commentary, and inquiry uh, into the dimensions of that world. How many units do we have? Five. So let's pull these stamps and let's have five stamps. When they come over to my reading group, there's all of the, the different um, manipulatives, the shapes and all the things that they can touch and, and they like, they're, they're very drawn to them and so um, we'll take a minute and we'll sit and talk about them because they're just right there and say, okay, well what's difference about, what's the difference between this pyramid and this pyramid? And they kind of study it, oh, it's got four sides, that one's a square pyramid and that one's a rectangular pyramid and okay, how many vertices does it have, that kind of thing. The materials are designed to, to focus on um, largest to smallest, shortest to longest, um, uh, heaviest, lightest, all those, those sorts of comparisons. We do a lot of talking about estimating and predicting. Mine was um, 97. Huh? Mine was 97. Throughout the classroom, we have different areas of the classroom, um, and they're, they're using math in, in a variety of different ways. In our practical life area, we have a, a sewing shelf, for example. So um, every time they sew, they have to measure out the, the amount of yarn that they're going to use to, to sew whatever it is they're going to sew. And when they serve themselves snack, they read on the board, okay, I get five animal crackers, and they have to count out five animal crackers. So just basic everyday skills are using math. What the year? 2012! What number's that in 2012? Two, zero, zero, one, two! Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, When the children learn their numbers, they don't always get it right off the bat. You know, it takes time and learning. It's a learning process. We allow them to have their mistakes and we don't even necessarily point it out to them in the beginning. The short bead stair has beads, numbers one to nine, and the child has to coordinate the actual number with the beads. So for example, nine goes with the nine bar. Um, they don't always match them up correctly, but when they recite it, they, they go in order, one, two, three, four, five, even though the number five might be at the number two, because that's a common reversal, is two and five. And so 
I don't point that out when they're reading it back to me. It's perfect. Eventually, they will recognize it. And if eventually they don't, we will correct them. But it's all about just going, you did it. So this is? Remember? Yeah, you counted the chain is 25 and the square is 25. You did it, Dylan. Good work. It's, it's very positive. It's, it's not noticing mistakes. Even when they get into addition for the first time, they might say three, take, three plus five or three together with five equals seven. I'm not gonna say you're wrong. I'm just gonna let it be and know that they will get there. Sometimes when they are reading the problem back to me, they might go, oh, wait, Three plus five is not seven. Three plus five is eight. And they'll correct it themselves. So one of the beautiful things about a Montessori classroom is a child is given the space to learn at their own pace. And it builds their self-esteem. They feel good about what they do, no matter if it's right or wrong in our adult world. The children uh, are able to work at their own pace. So there's no pressure. Um, if somebody isn't understanding a concept, they don't feel that their peers maybe are, are, are getting something that they're not understanding. We introduce the materials as the children have mastered the previous thing and are ready for it. Um, and so they are constantly feeling a sense of accomplishment that they are moving at their own, on their own trajectory. Um, and, and so it's not competitive that way. Um, their children are at different levels and um, usually children see uh, maybe an older friend doing a really complicated material and when they finally reach that they feel such a sense of accomplishment because they have seen um, somebody older doing this really amazing work and now they have achieved that for themselves. It's a wonderful opportunity early on, three years old, four years old, and five years old, to really supplement and support the mathematical development of young children. They are ready to learn. So teachers need to become attentive to the math opportunities as they present themselves in the preschool environment and need to become interested and able in drawing out a child's thinking to say, and then what, and then, and what if this happens? Uh, and to go forward with the child's thinking wherever that thinking may take the child. So it's, it's uh, going to be a consistent thing that they can use in their progression as they become older and older and more skilled in looking at the world through mathematical concepts. On the playground, um, you know, we've heard them counting um, a number of times, and they will do addition problems and subtraction problems spontaneously. One and a quarter cup water up to that line, then we pour it in. We have a half a cup of vegetable oil, and we fill it up to, let me see. We fill up to that line. Stop. 
we stop there, we put this the lid back on. Now we we pour it in and yes. What they do, numbers they will work for you. Let's do the numbers counting rag. Oh, let's do the numbers counting rag.